Hello, I'm going to give a brief overview of object-oriented programming and its purpose and benefits. Object-oriented programming is a different way of doing programming. We've been doing procedural programming so far and some languages are capable of doing object-oriented programming, which is a, a newer way of thinking of things. Um, I'll be introducing classes and I'm going to save a discussion of UML, inheritance, and polymorphism for another discussion. Procedural programming um, was with older programming languages or less powerful programming language. Um, a procedure is just another name for a module or a function, which we've uh, been familiar with. And those programs are fine until programs get get large and complicated and complex and then you have problems with procedural programming. You're going to think that object-oriented programming is more complex and confusing than procedural programming and it will be at first. You're going to have to write some more lines of code than you had to before and you have to think a different way and visualize problems in a different way. But uh, in the long run uh, with large programs, object-oriented programming saves a lot of time and a lot of effort. The book had a good uh, demonstration or example of a, a situation where object-oriented programming would save time and effort. Um, I think there was an example of a, an employee. You had an, if you, were, you, you had a program that centered around an employee, you might write, write a lot of procedures to do things with those fields. You might need to keep information about an employee, such as their name, their phone number, um, their hire date, their rate of pay. And every time you wrote a different, um, different method, different procedure, you would have to accept those fields as arguments and modify them or work with them and then return a value. And if you had to add another field and keep more information about that employee, you'd have to rewrite a lot of those procedures to incorporate a different number of arguments or to output the information differently. Object-oriented programming can eliminate that problem. With object-oriented programming, you can co you can group numerous variables together into one memory location with one name. So in the previous example, we were talking about an employee that had multiple characteristics, multiple variables associated with the employee. With object-oriented programming, we could create an employee object. And that employee object would encompass all of those fields into one, into one memory location. Somewhat similar to an array, in that an array can hold multiple pieces of information in one memory location with, uh, with one name but it had those individual boxes for each element of the array. The data part of an object is, is similar. There's going to be one name, but then there's going to be s almost like subfields within that name. And the way we're going to access those is, is through a, a dot operator in most languages. So we're going to use an object name, and then a dot, and then a variable name. Um, We'll get into an example here in a minute. Other than storing all of those variables related to the employee, you could also put the functions or the methods or procedures, or modules, you could put those all into that same memory location as well. So all the things that the the employee needs to know all the variables. Uh, 
and all the things that the employee can do, all the, all the things that had been standalone um, procedures before, are grouped together into this one thing called an object. Um, we give a special name to the variables or the data within an object. Um, you'll hear it called a field, or you'll hear it called um, a member variable. You'll hear it called some different things, but we'll just settle on field for our discussion. And we're going to settle on the word methods for the procedures that are part of the object. And I'll have an illustration here to help demonstrate that in a second. Continuing our differentiation between procedural and object-oriented programming, um, another thing that object-oriented programming does is encapsulates. It puts all the puts all the code into a single object, and that's kind of what we've been talking about. All the variables are, are lumped together in one memory location, and the uh, procedures that operate on the, the data. And we also have the ability to do data hiding. You don't have to hide data with object-oriented programming, but it is one of the main benefits that you can get from object-oriented programming. And by that, what's meant is the code that uses the object doesn't have direct access to setting the variables in the in the object. Remember when we had to write um, input validation code when we were before we were assigning a value to a variable. You can write code like that within within a class, and you can only allow the code to assign to the object valid data. And again, I'll show you an example here in a minute. Another benefit of object-oriented programming is object reusability. So with that ex employee example I talked about before, you might have a, um, a phone directory type application that's using that information. So you write a program that is a, like a phone phone book for employees and you use that employee uh, class within that program. But then you have to write another program later that uh, is going to be used to track um, track sick leave or something like that. And with that you could use all the same code from the employee class that you created in this other program. And you'd save yourself a lot of time and a lot of work. Okay, so now onto this um, new terminology. What's a class? What's an object? And some more specifics of those things that we uh, just were introduced to, such as data hiding. All right, a class, first and foremost, is code. And so what I'd like for you to do is use a notebook or have a document, create a document, some, somewhere that you're going to keep track of, of this information uh, because you've got to get this straight in your head. And really, it's more important that you can understand what object-oriented programming is all about be able to describe it in your own words and describe what a class is and what an object is. That's more important to me than you being able to actually make a program using these at this point in your development, but uh, hopefully you will be able to make those soon. So a class is, is code. Right, that's the first thing. Uh, a class is like a blueprint. It's also like a cookie cutter, is the example in the book. It's kind of like a user-defined data type. In the past, we've been creating variables that were numbers or strings, like integers. Now we're going to be able to we'll be able to create once we have a class, we'll be able to create something called an employee 
that holds all that information together. But the class is just the code. An object gets created from the class. An object is a location in memory, like a variable. Um, so if we talked about the class being a blueprint, the object would be the house that gets created from the blueprint. And just like you can't put furniture into a blueprint, you have to put it into a house, you can't assign a value to a class, you have to assign a value to an object. So the object is similar to a variable and that it's a location of memory that we can work with within our program. So if you have a little chart like this in your notes, it's going to help you. You can pause this video here and, and write this down if it helps. And I think it will. Here's some pseudocode for how to create a class. This is going to vary in different programming languages, but notice uh, they do have a different naming convention for classes. We start a class with a capital letter, and we capitalize the first letter of every word after that. And within a class we have field declarations and method declarations. Alright, so let's, let's explore these two concepts a little bit more in depth. What's a method and what's a field? A method is like a module. It's just a name for some lines of code. Right, that's what a module is, a named for some lines of code. Um, lines of code that are going to do something. Uh, a field is like a variable, it's somewhere to hold information. You'll also hear the word data associated with field. You'll also hear the words function and procedure associated with methods. And a method is basically a function or a procedure or a module. Fields are information. Fields are what an object knows. And methods are what an object can do. Actions that are performed on the fields. In general, methods are going to be public, fields are going to be private.